Thank you for using telemetry overlay. Now we're going to review the export options. I'm using footage provided by Joe Bennett. He's got a great channel on sailing. He's super active and creates great content. So if you're into that, make sure to check it out. So once we're ready to export a project, we'll go to the export section at the top. And normally we would want to export a finished video with the default settings. But there are ways to improve your export experience and your results. Let's talk about them. Of course, if you are only interested in a section of your video, you can trim it with the in and out points. And that will also make the export time shorter. Just note that this is not the same as changing the in and out points of the project section. Changing the length of the project does change the appearance of some gauges. So if you want to keep gauges the same, it's best to do this from the export section. And since we are in the project section, two major factors in export times are resolution and frame rate. Reducing them will give you faster exports, but of course that's not usually what you want to do, as this will reduce the quality of your video. So let me introduce the very best way to reduce render times. We'll go to settings on the top right, scroll down to gauge update rate, and changing it to a smaller value will significantly improve our render times. So half is faster than full, quarter is faster than half, and so on. Now what effect does this have visually on the video? Here's an example. On the left we see the full update rate, towards the right we see the effect of smaller values. I would say half looks perfect even for fast moving gauges, quota looks great for most gauges, maybe the accelerometer starts to stutter a bit, and with 8, the difference is also noticeable in the speedometer, but it doesn't look bad, and slower moving gauges like the GPS path are not really affected by the setting. So for most use cases, you don't really need the full gauge update rate. And this would be even less noticeable if you were filming at higher frame rates like 50 or 60. <laughs> Additionally, when exporting finished videos to MPEG-4 format, you will have some encoder options. This will vary depending on your system, but you might see options like NVIDIA, AMD, Intel QuickSync, and Video Toolbox for Apple computers. This is experimental and will not work on every computer, but in general, it would also give you a small increase in render speed. We have options for both H.264 and H.265, meaning H.265 is more compressed, creates smaller files, but is less compatible with some video players. And to put all this in perspective, this table shows the effect of gauge update rates from left to right, and the effect of GPU encoders versus default ones. GPU meaning NVIDIA, AMD, Video Toolbox, etc. This is a very approximate visualization of render times. So as you can see, reducing the gauge update rate has a very dramatic effect, and the GPU encoders only provide a small advantage, but it's bigger if combined with the gauge update rate. And these are the resulting render speeds, to put it another way. This is very approximate. It will vary a lot between projects and systems, but it's a good reference. When using the standard encoders, you will see sliders for quality, speed, and the resulting file size. The key takeaway here is changing video quality does not affect render speed, but it does affect file size. And likewise, changing the render speed does not affect the video quality, it affects the file size. So of course, the bigger the video quality and render speed, the larger the final file size. And note that changing the render speed here has some effect, but not as much as changing the gauge update rate. For the GPU encoders, the controls are different and they're not always the same, so make sure to use the question mark tooltip on the right to get specific information. But basically, they all have a bitrate control that modifies both the file size and the video quality. Moving on to other options, we can choose to include the original audio or not. Be aware that this is not the same as muting your project for playback, which only affects audio within the program. We can of course change the destination of our export as well. And let's now discuss transparent exports. These are useful if you want to continue your project in a standard video editor and you want to be able to treat the video and the overlay separately, for example for color correction or reframing. Generally what I recommend is exporting to a transparent video, and this has fewer options but you can still change the encoder. The default one, PNG sequence, is a good balance between compression, that is file size, and compatibility but be aware that transparent videos are always very large. The ProRes option is a professional format with very little compression, high quality but extremely large files, and Qt RLE is more compressed than PNG, so it creates smaller files, but it's not always compatible with video players and video editors. If you wanted a transparent video with small files, you could go back to exporting in MPEG-4 and enable the chroma background option. You can then remove the green color with a chroma key in your video editor.
Be careful though, because any gauges that do have green color could be removed by the chroma key as well. In some cases, it could help to change the color of the chroma background. Finally, for transparent exports, you can also choose the transparent frames option. This will create a single file for every frame in your project, so be prepared for thousands of files, if not more. And note that this can be unstable on some systems as it tries to write many files in a short amount of time, so it probably shouldn't be your first option. One alternative way of working with video editors would be to make your color correction separately and then replace the video files in telemetry overlay, but make sure the video is the same length to preserve sync. Or you could start your project by importing the color corrected video. And even if the embedded telemetry is not present anymore, you can still load it from the original file from the telemetry section. Okay, so that's a comprehensive overview. There are some more technical details in the instructions manual, but if you still have questions, feel free to ask them. See you in the next one.